fast and true, and our glory shall fall. Capcom really upped its game with their RE engine that debuted in 2017's Resident Evil 7. It has seen Capcom through 16 games and 3 console generations, but none were as demanding and out of that design scope as Dragon's Dogma 2, which is probably why it's the first to make this versatile engine visibly bulge at the seams. This is a game that relies on physically based materials, photogrammetry textures and realistic human models and animation, alongside a fantastical and mythical world. But the bumpers come off in places where we see the open-ended dynamic and systemic game design with CPU-controlled enemies and teammates, vast open planes to explore and dense towns with constant data streaming. This flips the linear nature of the core engine's focus on its head, raising the demands on the throughput, the teams, memory management and ultimately performance. The RE engine always delivers good looking games and Dragon's Dogma 2 is no different. Obviously it's a vast increase over the original Xbox 360 and PS3 versions offering excellent texture details, dense geometry, large and looming creatures, dynamic weather and time of day, long view distance, dense and highly reactive foliage, volumetrics, screen space reflections and it looks to use mesh shading, tessellated ground and good shadow maps and dynamic lights, which offers a game that has all the hallmarks of the RE engine and Capcom art design but on a much, much larger scale. Scaling from the highest end PC with an RTX 4090 down to the Xbox Series S offers up a vast range of hardware specifications. Let's ignore the Steam Deck for now. Let's start with those important options and numbers Dragon's Dogma 2 offers. There's a single mode across all consoles, but using the PC, we can see a selection of adjustments with nice visual examples for many, which helps understand the changes and effects you make within the RE engine. But something jumps out. The range of options within each setting is limited. Most are a simple on-off toggle or only a low or high setting, with textures and image quality being the most vital. All three console versions look close to identical in base settings, which align close to the maximum on PC with some reductions. Specifically, there's no ray tracing on Series S, but it is present on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Ambient occlusion is a screen space variety on Series S, rather than the sign distant fields or ray tracing option of the PC's highest setting and bigger consoles. Mesh level of detail looks closest to high rather than max, and shadows again are closest to high rather than maximum. The textures themselves are likely high or max on PS5 and Xbox Series X, but close to low on Xbox Series S, which is a problem for that console. Series S and Series X reduce the image quality relative to the PC at least. It comes in close to the fifth level out of 10 on the setting slider for image quality and closer to three or four for the Series S. Some areas also look to have slightly lower level of detail on the series consoles, but this is very minor. This leaves the PlayStation 5 with a substantially sharper and more detailed image than the other two machines, a reverse of what we saw with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Thus, the setting appears to be shader pass and pixel sampling related. It effectively impacts textures, shadows, ambient occlusion, alpha effects, so all grass, fire, rocks, signs and people are impacted with a blockier, more pixelated image and softer details due to lower samples, which is reduced further by the temporal anti-aliasing pass. It stands out in comparisons, and although not detrimental on Series X during standalone play, the image quality reduction is one of the largest I have seen since Resident Evil 4. The Series S, though, is a huge reduction over PS5 and even Series X with textures and image quality being severely degraded. Grass Alpha is another small concession and it's quite noticeable relative to the other two consoles. The final piece of image quality, as per previous games, is the resolution output choice. All three consoles use the interlace setting by the looks of things and this means a full 4K output on PS5 and Series X via a half width rasterization pass on the horizontal axis. The Series S drops to 2560 by 1440 output, coming up from a 1280 by 1440p base. 
pixel counters amongst you may notice that this is half the pixels of a full 4K on the bigger consoles and less pixels than a 1920 by 1080 output on the Series S. Ultimately, these are the same targets as Resident Evil 4's resolution mode for each console. As we covered in our preview, Dragon's Dogma 2 may have an unlocked frame rate, but 60 FPS is all but impossible to achieve on consoles, and from all my tests, impossible to lock out on PC, including with that RTX 1490. However, the reasons for this are not straightforward, and my testing had to go deeper on some aspects. Let me explain. During development, many games run with no cap on the performance, just limited by the TV or monitor sync limit. Capped or half rate options are normally added later. The fact the review version is still unlocked like this is a small red flag that makes me wonder what other corners might have been cut to get this out the door. But of course, Capcom has released games on weaker consoles with the same unlocked rate, even when the console could never hit 60 FPS, such as Resident Evil 4 on the PlayStation 4. By leaving it unlocked though, overall performance can be improved in comparison to a 33 millisecond cap whilst in development. The reason is Dragon's Dogma 2 often becomes bandwidth or fill rate limited, and this is a bigger issue on consoles due to the contention they have with GPU and CPU sharing the same memory bus and bandwidth. A PC has two dedicated memory pools, which has its own issues, but here it's an advantage. And this is why we see the use of interlacing and on the Xbox consoles, a lowering of the image quality settings to reduce pressure. With the Series S being impacted the most due to its much smaller RAM allocation and bandwidth. On all consoles though, we see similar readouts, often hovering between the lower end of 30 to 40. Series X is slightly better than the PS5, within 4% on average, but most often being within margin of error. Once we get any heavy alpha effects, such as fire-breathing dragons, flooding water, or dense foliage in alpha, we see this bandwidth contention crop up, dropping us into the 50s to 70 millisecond range on frame times, which means bouts of sub 30 FPS. The other big issue, and what explains why the team at Capcom has taken the choice to ship the highest resolution and image quality on each, are the towns. Vernworth, for example, stresses the engine and hardware most, with many aspects it was never designed for. Large, dense open areas, high geometry and material samples, large number of NPCs with dynamic pathfinding, AI, emerging gameplay, state models, and then the biggest one, consistent data streaming and management. Here, all platforms struggle with frame times bouncing up and down like a ping pong ball. In a run to the tavern, which is a well-known tradition here in England, both consoles are sub 30 FPS as the CPU and memory demands cause erratic performance, which hits its deepest low as you enter the pub and the NPCs are instantiated and then allocated a state. The faster the hardware, or the more reductions made on the amount of data and tasks the platform is pushing, the better your performance will be here. But on my high-end 5800X 3D, which is an 8-core 16-thread CPU at 4.5 GHz, we are often in the 30fps range here whilst moving around the town. The consoles do not use the SSD and dedicated hardware designs very well, or maybe even at all, with the impact being higher here than you would expect specifically on the PS5, as that has more silicon dedicated to alleviate data seek and load from the CPU. The Series X is slightly worse in the CPU impacted areas, but again, it's academic as neither delivers a stable frame time readout. The Series S performance is close enough to both, with it being on average just below the PS5, but without a frame rate analysis, they all feel about the same in play. But the Series S will dip into the same bandwidth and CPU heavy sections, even with those significant reductions relative to the bigger consoles. The smaller console delivers close enough performance metrics here not to miss anything, but the biggest deltas are the sacrifices in textures and image quality, and that small pool of RAM highlights the impacts on how Dragon's Dogma 2 looks far more than the frame rate does. I am sure with more time and effort, the team can improve the current state on all formats, but the Series S is the one most in need due to the degraded image it has, and even on a 1080p screen, this is an obvious eyesore. 
a variable refresh rate or VRR screen will not help here as all of the consoles are often below the required range and can even stutter into 50, 80 milliseconds frequently during many areas. And that cannot be resolved by the technology. The Cyclops! Oh, Chris, be on your guard! The PC version starts well. A DirectX 12 API kicks off a fixed shader compilation pass, and then once complete, you never have to think about that again. Dragon's Dogma 2 on the Steam Deck, as it stands currently, is unplayable though. It's likely engine, memory, bandwidth, and API related, but even at a forced 640x480 output and low settings, we are seeing a paltry 7 to 14 FPS at best. At the same time, this is the first game from Capcom that appears to have had a high-end PC focus from the start and may have even had a PC-developed game from the off due to the big RPG market PC has. I'm led to believe this is because it offers both DLSS and FSR options right out of the box with Nvidia Latency Boost also within the menu. Both are better options than interlaced so long as they are set at balanced or higher with DLSS being clearly superior. From a GPU perspective, my RTX 4090 has far more performance and bandwidth than anything else, and at such, a 4K output using DLSS quality offers a vastly superior image quality to consoles. The ray trace global illumination can also be turned on, but the improvement here was often very slight to invisible outside, but improved ambient shadows inside. And aside some edge cases, such as on water bodies, the performance cost may not be worth it for most. During the GPU heavier sections out in the wild, fighting griffins, trolls or dragons, Dragon's Dogma 2 holds a close lock on 60fps, and even higher if you have the screen to support it. But it can dip and sway during rapid action, and fast camera movement or streaming sections under 60fps often enough to notice. But a G-Sync or such screen would help here. These are, again, the same issues with CPU memory and data causing the GPU to stall and wait for work, which means we get delays in our frame delivery and thus frame rates can still drop below 60. But even on the RTX 4090, you cannot run the game at native 4K. It's consistently somewhere between the 30s and 40s. In the towns, the GPU is much less of an issue and here the CPU and data streaming demands mean we are again down into the 30s with stutter. We're fully CPU memory bound here and no GPU performance can resolve this because it's not a GPU issue. It remains something for the developers to attempt to resolve and just as this review was closing out, the team confirmed my findings. They plan to investigate the high CPU demands due to the MPC state models and location tracking so an update should land once ready. Moving down the stack and sitting in between the PS5 and the RTX 4090 is my AMD powered RX 6800 with a 6 core 12 thread 5600X. We can run Dragon's Dogma 2 with a superior image quality using FSR 3 set to balanced at 4K and settings close to the PlayStation 5. And we get a 45 to 60 FPS performance in those grassy hills and creature battles. And of course, we are always at the mercy of the CPU performance in those towns. And as such, we can see lower performance and more stutters as the GPU is left waiting for work. On PC, memory demands can exceed eight gigabytes of system RAM and 13 gigabytes of VRAM, which is far higher than expected levels, which pretty much sums up the performance requirements at this point for the game. Loading is not such a highlight, again pointing back to the core aspects of data and streaming memory management. It still is very fast considering the size of the world, but across PS5, series consoles and SSD equipped PCs, there are approximately 15 seconds to load in. Of course, this will be more dependent on a faster CPU than the SSD speeds, and this is reinforced by the Series X beating the PlayStation 5. When picking which platform to play Dragon's Dogma 2 on, be aware that PC players get the best choice of options in image quality thanks to this being the first game from Capcom to ship with DLSS and FSR3, offering enhanced image quality over consoles. However, CPU and memory impacts remain the biggest cause for concern in performance, which highlights why the team has pushed settings and resolution as high as possible on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S. No matter what, the frame rate is going to drop to sub 30 FPS when you're in town. A closer hold to that benchmark with better image quality is their aim, rather than large spikes from 60 to 30 and degraded image quality the whole time. 
and this is where they need to improve, as even at the lowest settings on PC, we leave 70% or more GPU performance on the table and still run under 30 FPS in these worst case instances. If I was a betting man, I would suspect over the next two months or so, patches will come that will improve the consistency, if not the overall performance across the board. None of this distracts from the superb game that Dragon's Dogma 2 is, but if you are sensitive to frame rate fluctuations, it may be worth giving them the time before embarking on this majestic journey, because the performance issues that are along for the ride at the moment could be enough to ruin that adventure. And that's it for the deep dive into games, technology and all things Dragon Dogma related. Remember, if you like what we do here on IGN Performance Reviews and IGN, then keep it IGN and we'll catch you on the next one.